Welcome back to the C Morning Show, everyone. It is approximately quarter past seven in the a.m., uh, and it's time for our next talk show. But before we get into it, I'd like to ask uh, Karina here. You've done a lot What's of up, work traveling around the country and doing sort of, you know, kind of playing your role, doing work, going to villages and stuff like that. What are some of the more unique places that you've been to? Um, I think I've definitely explored a lot more on central Java. So okay. where, where my mom's from, around Clapton area, the, the more rural villages, mm -hmm. but also um, East Java. So around, oh, really? yeah, Bromo okay. and then further east to Banyuwangi. But nice. I think I'd say I've only sort of explored or, you know, volunteered um, in, in Java. What, uh, what would you say is some of the um, needs that are most um, some that needs to be prioritized the most over there in those areas? You know, definitely, I, I worked with children a lot, so I think education, yeah. but it's important that you said that because I was actually catching up with a friend of mine who recently went to Sumba. Oh, And okay. he was saying how much it is needed oh, there wow. because the, the people there, especially the kids, they see foreigners as if they're like aliens. Yeah, never seen them before, right. <laughs> So, so uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, that goes to show, I mean, education can uh, definitely exactly. go a long way. However, it needs to reach a long way as well in some cases. Mm -hmm. And this morning, our guest is a man who devotes his life to fostering education in disadvantaged regions, especially in Lombok, West Nusa Tenggara. Let's now say good morning to education activist and Jage Kastare founding, uh, foundation director, Ahmad Junaidi. Good morning, Mas Ahmad. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Mas Ahmad. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for uh, being with us this morning, bright and early, all the way from Lombok. So, um, can you start off by telling us a little bit uh, about Jage Kastare? What is it? It is a volunteer-powered organization, so it is very important to highlight that we are a volunteer-powered. Okay. Uh, we run by the initiative and power of the volunteers. We work in education. But through education, we then have some sub-activities. Uh, we teach English, we go to schools to uh, deal with the basic literacy problems. We also build some kind of charity shop where we gather clothes and then we sell the clothes. And then we use the money to fund the education and tuition fee of some of our beneficiaries. Um, we do a disaster relief uh, intervention as well. So we pretty much want to be this model of a village-based uh, activism in a way that if you start from a village and if you have this kind of organization in a village, we can expand this to other villages and we can see better Indonesia in general. Amen. Uh, wow. So wait, when did you start this foundation and, um, and how, was, how was it that you got started with it? Did you have any help in the beginning? It started after I finished my master's degree, coming back from uh, a scholarship called the Australia Award Scholarship, and I studied applied linguistics at the University of Adelaide. I went back to my village where I was born and raised. Um, I've always been um, identifying myself as very tied to my root of my village. I was born and raised there, and I see the problems, and I, I was younger, and we have access of energy with some of other friends and we just said, okay, why not use this energy to do something in the village? Um, and then we just, yeah, we just started. Um, it also started with the initiative of uh, village, um, the village youth wanting to have some kinds of training on English. Okay. So, so it's a collection of initiatives from, from many 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 people yeah right that is definitely um very inspiring um Sahma, to you know you had the opportunity to study abroad and you brought that knowledge and experience back home and not only back home but also to your roots specifically now we know that education is very important especially um to the younger generation and maybe some people in certain parts of Indonesia right now don't have access to, to education yet. So can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what inspired you? Maybe did you find something during your time abroad 
that you came back and you thought, you know what, I think education is very important where I'm from and as you said, where um, you, you grew up and your roots and maybe tell us a little bit more about that. What inspired you to really focus on education and, and got it started there? Um, yeah, education, we can, we can see education as something that correlates to so many other yeah. aspects of what Indonesia should deal with. It has something to do with the way we uh, do economy, yeah. So uh, education is the start of improving the well-being of Indonesia. It has something to do with health and also the crime rate. I mean, if you see the relationship between the health and education and the well-being of the people in terms of the economy, it is the start. And when we look at the data that our teachers, like half, more than half of our teachers cannot pass, the teacher competency test and also only one in five of the students can comprehend a simple text and only two in five can do simple math even though they are in the fourth grade of uh, primary school when you see the data that our reading speed is very low and i went straight to the villages to do some tests on the kids literacy reading speed something that we can really measure here it's so saddening. So that is the reason why we started and we focused on that. And also our major portion is teaching English because we believe that English is also a very important uh, element of today's um, modern world. Indeed. And uh, what sort of programs do you have in place, uh, Mas, in regards to furthering these kids' education? Um, so this day, um, so this afternoon, we're going to three primary schools. Okay. So we will bring a topic about, um, so it's, it's a simple question. Why, if you sit under a tree, it feels so uh, shady and fresh? Uh, <laughs> compared to if, if you sit under like a tarp or a, a building mm. that doesn't have the leaves. Mm -hmm. So it starts with that. We teach English through that. We teach literacy through, through that. So the students read the text in both languages. Okay. And then, so that is what we do now. So we teach literacy and we teach English at the same time and we teach the content because we see teaching language as a vehicle of teaching about the world and also what we can do to make the world a better place. So that's one that is running. Another one is we are in cooperation with the government to uh, widen the reach of our charity shop. So we want to have some kinds of, so if you see in the foreign, in foreign countries like uh, Salvation Army store, for example, the thrift store. So we want to have that in Lombok and I hope that we can make it. Uh, Mas United, you mentioned, I'm very interested in what you mentioned earlier in regards to teaching both not only Bahasa but English at the same time. How challenging is that? I mean, I can assume with Bahasa, they're already speaking it growing up natively and just having to teach them to read. But when it comes to teaching an entire language at the same time, what are some of the challenges that you experience perhaps in that particular aspect or any other aspect? Um, first, I have to underline that the purpose of teaching English in early years is not to make them a competent speaker because okay. that's a very um, heavy undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to achieve from teaching English here is that so that they can have this positive attitude towards learning a um, global communication tool. Um, the challenge is real. The challenge it's, I mean, we've been talking about this in, in our research rooms that, oh, can we really do this and can we really do that? Then the conclusion is, if you do it right, it's a very beneficial activity to do. And the more students learn more languages, their brain is so plastic, that flexible, that they can, um, they can acquire the language, both language, uh, both languages and the challenge is really to make the method interesting and not become counterproductive because the students can be really burdened, their cognition can be really burdened by, um, by this kind of activity, the bilingual education. 
Yeah, that's very true. But also, yeah, yeah I remember it. it is a lot easier, isn't it, when you're younger to learn a new thing and learn That's a new sure. language, especially yeah. that you're older. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, know, I think I remember I, trying to pick up a, a language. My grandma tried, attempted to teach me Dutch when I was mm. a teenager. And uh, I found it's a bit it so hard, where she taught my cousin yeah. when she was like four. Yeah. And a she picked easier. it up a, a lot easier. Um, now, um, Masama, with that said, what. Um, what are the challenges that you can maybe share with us that you face often, especially teaching children aren't always very easy. There are some obstacles that you have to face. And I guess from, from our end, how can we help and, and support and do our part for uh, Jagi Kastari? Um, the facilities, oh, so we have, we have the people here. I work at uni and I work with my students. I invite my students to the villages because I believe that university should always be in connection yeah. with people that they have to serve. Um, and then the facilities here, like I remember teaching, uh, I think it's uh, two weeks ago, I was writing on the whiteboard and the, the, the board marker just got into that inside the board marker because it was very old. And then that is one of the problem. We know that 16% of the success in learning is uh, influenced by the facility in a way that how the physical of the school interacts with the behavior of the students. So that's why we need to have the right facility for the right place. And that poor board markers, uh, so uh, the whiteboard, yeah, is. Is something that we want to change so that one example is how we need help um, we know that books is a very important uh, tool it is not that Indonesian kids don't want to read it's that's a very wrong conception mm. it is that only 19% of the schools in Indonesia have a proper libraries and we can start with that and we can start also with something that is deeper than just starting the school we start with how they got into schools with, let's say, if their brain is stunted in its development. Mm. And I believe that this multi-layered, multifactorial, multifaceted problems that, that we have to deal with together. And Jago Kasar Foundation has also done some interventions in education for childbearing age women. Uh, we, 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 we did some stunting programs as well. So we see that interaction and we need help in both direction. So the resources, uh, let's say money, books, facilities, and also competent volunteers. Right, indeed. And if you want to know how to do your part, uh, you can check out uh, www.jagekastarefoundation.eu.org or check them out on Instagram at Yayasan Jage Kastare underscore Lombok. By the way, that is a very unique name. I'm not familiar with the dialect. Can you explain what uh, Jage Kastare actually means? What it translates to? Um, Jage Kastare, it's, it's similar to uh, the Indonesian. Jage is it's keeping and okay. also Kastare. Um, I, one, one person in the village told me that it means the knighthood Kekasatriaan. Um, so the bravery of doing something. Wow. It is the name of our neighborhood way back before the government changed its name into something that more administratively better. So it was the archaic name of the village. So I just took that and then just, okay, so this is our name. What? Yeah. Wow. What it's, very, uh, yeah, it's very suitable. Yes, keeping, it's, it, yeah, keeping the bravery, yeah, it's, okay. yeah. So it's yeah, it's a perfect plane. name for it, I think, because uh, it's a very noble thing that you and the rest of the volunteers are doing. So we thank you for your continued efforts, and we do hope uh, that you have much uh, success throughout this year as well. Thank and you thank you again for joining us this morning, Mas United. Thank you very much. All thank right. you very much for inviting. Have a great day. There you go, guys. Uh, go check out those aforementioned sites and social media to find out more. And, yeah, uh, maybe yeah. we can volunteer together. Absolutely, why not? That.